Uh-oh. Okay. Well, okay. we're four minutes in to a- after six o'clock, and uh, we're all here. Well, Rob, Except, uh, are, you, are we missing. all here? Are, are, are you really here? Because right, I feel like you're... Um... Do I look it? You look... You know, listen, buddy. I, you don't ever... I've never seen you look uh, like the kind of tired where you look terrible. But I mean, I could just tell by the facial expressions you're making, the the, the amount that you're blinking, uh, that you're struggling right now. I'm struggling, yeah. And it's hard to see your friends struggle. It's tough. Thanks, I don't buddy. like it. Um, uh, why don't yep, you tell everybody yep. what you were just, why don't you tell everybody what you were just doing and why it was so important. And, uh, and uh, let's just, you know, let's get, get into, into it. it. Yeah. Well, I'd like to know. I, I I haven't talked to you since you were over there, so I'd like to know. It's 6 a.m. here. Well, it's actually 6.05 in the morning. Um, mm-hmm. Charlie's not here, but uh, but we're here. Yeah. And uh, I'm a little foggy because I just got back from Europe, um, mm-hmm. doing a thing in Europe. And... Um, Oh, Charlie's Chrome is out of date. He's got all sorts of, he's replacing it. Uh Uh-oh. That's okay. I just got back from Europe and we have a lot going on and then it's it's 6 a.m. and uh, I'm just a little out of it. But I'll snap to it. Do you want to to tell us what you were doing over there in uh, Europa? Yeah, I was in Wales. Uh, Well, I was in London. I was in Wales Mm -hmm. and uh, I was watching football, watching football soccer here in the united states and um and then uh i did I'm actually su- i did the po- i did the podcast last week you i didn't we missed you i thank you i i saw that um you know it was interesting because i i saw you guys trying to go into a thing where you were uh you know gonna give me shit for not being there because i couldn't be there uh but you know there's just not that much shit you can really talk about me. I, I, I you were trying, you were trying, and I, I appreciate that because that would have been very funny. But then I think you very quickly realized, like, we love this guy. There's, there's nothing we can say that bad about him, really. Um, you know. <laughs> I might have cut that, Glenn. I might have just cut that. Uh, yeah, you might have <laughs> cut, cut all that. I'm gonna disable my video. Do you, not you, want you can't that. disable I'm, your video. This is a video oh, podcast. Okay. I just feel very self-conscious. I feel like there's a camera pointed right in my face. I'll get past it. I'll get past it. I'm uh, these these are all champagne problems. I'm not I'm not really complaining. I just I feel like shit. And um you know, I'm going to snap out of it, Glenn. You know me. I can I can come it's, into a room and f- feel real bad, but then I can I can snap through it. You listen, I've I, I I you've always been good at that. So much better at that than me. Sometimes it takes me hours hours to warm up and uh and uh you know c- c- snap out of it so to speak when i'm when i'm in the kind of place that you're in right now you know what people probably love to hear they they turn on their podcast they turn on the podcast because they want to they're driving to work and and it's, yeah, and it's 6 a.m where they are and they're like they want to hear they want to hear tv stars moaning <laughs> they want to hear yeah, people who fly back from europe just complaining right yeah yeah, See, yeah that's the kind of shit that'll snap me out of it oh boy where i, where yeah, I have right. just a little bit of perspective and i'm like you know, shut up. I just, yeah, you're like, shut I up, just, you little bitch. I'm just, I'm, I'm tired. I just got back from Europe where I was watching the football team that I own, uh, play and, uh, you know, and the first class I got it. Look, uh, you know, I don't want to complain here, but you know, it's just not first class. It's just not the same as private, you know, I, it's great. It's great. You know, and, and I had my, I had my own pod, but it was one of those pods in the middle where you're right next to somebody else's pod. You know what I mean? It's you want to be on the pods on the side where you're just totally alone and isolated, you know, and I had a pod and it was next to a guy and I could hear him breathing and it just I don't know, you guys. And it's the flight just, attendant it's kept it's asking me, Do you want something? Constantly. Is there something else we can bring you, sir? And I'm like, Hey, yeah. leave me alone. Well, also, but wait, could you grab me a champagne? I mean, that'd be great. Yes. Yes, literally champagne problems. Where it's like, can I get you some more champagne? And I'm like, you're making this a problem. You're, you keep bothering me. I'm trying to relax with my. Well, hang on a second. Yes, I do want more. I'm just saying, don't every five seconds be. Well, I'm not saying don't check on me. Definitely check on me. I mean, I want to make sure that the glass is at least half full. But if it's not, if it's more than half full, then maybe just give it a sec, okay? Yeah. It's always half empty. It's always half empty. That's, I think that's, is that, what, uh, is that what we're getting to? That is what we're getting to. Anyway. 
Can you see me? Can people see and hear me? Yes, we can see. We can see you now, Charlie. So Hi. I don't know what the fuck happened? I went to do the same old, same old, and it goes. You, you got to use a newer Google Chrome. So I uploaded the thing off the fucking internet, and now my computer. Well, Charlie, really we works. spent the first you- twelve minutes complaining, and um, and then realizing that the audience. Well, I'll, I'll throw some complaints. Yeah. You want some extra complaints? Yeah, let's throw some, throw, on, throw on some of your complaints. I, I, I think it's great. I can, see, I can barely see you guys. Why did it update it to like? If you want, we can update it and make and it worse. Not work your computer. Yeah, at all. we've we've up we've made make, and 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 we've worse. made it worse. Um, <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah, this is. I, I by the way, I I'm loving this because I feel like I'm always the one who's like tired and in a bad mood, and and. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's it's, me, a, lot, it's like, a lot later yeah. for you right now, well, and we. No, I, I love I, wait, I love that. this idea because I, I get up early anyway, but I, I I generally don't get up and then get onto camera, and I think that's my. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's, Do you resent it a little bit? Do you resent it? Come on, let's. It's okay. Like, hey guys, people want to hear about this stuff. They do, you know. No, yeah. you know what they want to hear about? Because it's fucking hilarious. Yeah. The gang gets whacked. Yeah. <laughs> Boom, boom, out boom, bad. eyes. <laughs> I got to, I got to, th- I may as well, since, since I just did boom eyes, I got to throw a, a quick shout out yeah, to my man. buddy, Greg Wiener, who uh, plays bingo in the episode. One of my closest friends for a very long time. We, we uh, were roommates together in Miami, Florida for a short period of time. And I just absolutely love that guy and I miss him. And I think he's great in the episode. Uh, the eyes bit, speaking of boom eyes, I believe that was a bit we came up with on the day. I don't think that was something that was in the script. I think that was something that we just realized on the day would be funny. I don't know. The casting of Bingo, it w- was like the f- was the first time where we really thought, well, we're in season three, and we uh-huh. see all these other shows. We see all these other shows, and they seem to be able to get stars on them to do ki- just qu- quick cameos, and we thought that'd be cool. Um, I guess are people watching the show? It's hard to tell. There's no social media. We don't really, we don't really know. We don't trust the ratings that are being given to us because they're being used as pieces uh-huh. of information to leverage against us during our negotiations. So, so, <laughs> so are people watching the show? I don't know. Well, let's make some offers to some stars and see. You know, we have this funny character named Bingo. Wait, wait. Can I? Can I? Do you? Do you remember who we offered it to first? Yes. Because I think I rem- I think I, I remember. I I do. Let's see if we all remember. I do. Okay, should we write it was down? Was it Sean our, Penn? It was a Sean Penn, yeah. <laughs> I think it was Sean Penn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> I think we, 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 was, yeah. Uh, let's start with Sean Penn. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going down to Greg Wiener. <laughs> well, uh, do you remember the progression? I remember the progression. No, I don't remember the progression. I just remember us going to Sean Penn. And I do remember thinking like, he might do it. I mean, Danny's on the show. He might do it. He might have done it. You know, here's the thing. It might not have ever even gotten to him. You know? It's like the thing where you reach out to his reps and they're like, no, he's not going to do uh, one scene on a basic cable show. Like, the only way to get to a guy like that is like, a friend has to call a friend. Like, Danny has we to did call have Danny. him. We, we did. Like, hey, man. Try to reach out to him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We did. We did? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And even then, I don't blame him. He's like, uh, it's like in fucking... You know, Haiti saving yeah. people's lives. I think it was, but it was around the time that Entourage was on and, and people were doing Entourage left and right. Now, that's a show about the entertainment industry. Nevertheless, they did it. So we didn't get mm-hmm. Sean Penn. Sean, and, well, so and, and, was, the, and, the, and the date was looming and it was it was getting close. But we thought, okay, how about, okay, let's go to somebody else who, who would be um, not a person necessarily of note or of name, but somebody you've seen in a lot of movies and he's a great actor and we have Mm -hmm. a personal connection to him and he would be great. He's not exactly Sean Penn, but he's fantastic. And do you know who that person was? Saul Louis Guzman. Louis Guzman. We offered it to Louis Guzman. Yeah, Yeah, because I was I was buddies with Louis. Mm -hmm. So I just texted him. And Louis was like more willing to do it and that was just a schedule thing and then he just couldn't do it. That's right. But Louis might have done it like if he was in town and, and had a Louis would have been amazing. He would have been amazing. Louis, Louis would have been amazing. I love that guy. Yeah. Why have we not had I him on the show? I don't know. It's crazy that we have Well, him now, but now we we're in a position where him, people say, hey, I love Sonny. Can, can, can we, can I do, I'd love to do an episode. And then we think about it. We talk about it. And then we maybe say, yeah, great. We're shooting at this period. Are you available? Nah, man, I'm just not available. And it just never works ever. 
ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's also to, yeah, it's, it's, it's also do. there's also rarely ever a guest star role on our show that would be worthy of those people's time, right? So I you know, I think of some of those people and I'm like, I want to put them on the show, but I want to put them in something that's yeah. like not just, you know, us like the usual guest star which is us being insane and uh you know, the person sitting across from us very grounded and real like what is happening? You know, well, Literally saying what is that? I will also say, I do think maybe it was a blessing in disguise where from a creative standpoint where, you know, when you have your pick and anyone who's anyone can play the guy working out of a garage named Bingo, right? You know, it becomes so top heavy in a way where it can pull the audience out where suddenly they're like, wait, holy shit, that's that guy. That's Sean Penn. That's Sean Penn. What is he doing oh, on the show? It was. It's always been fun to me to mostly populate the show with people you've either never seen or or or, or don't have preconceived notions of. You know. Yeah. yeah Sean, Sean Penn would have been Sean good. Sean Penn would have been good. This was the the only the only season really where we had so many characters who played real characters. Like those gangsters are almost like cartoon cartoon characters. They're so funny, <laughs> but we very rarely do that. So funny. Yeah, do you guys remember casting those guys? Um, how you went about casting? I think just the them? usual way. Uh, I, I think we look. At, I think we just looked at casting, right, guys? I mean, we didn't know who those guys were. Um, I think we just cast no. who we found to be the funniest in their auditions, and then it was really interesting because I don't think the three of them knew each other, yet they instantly became like this like trio of guys. Like they were. <laughs> So they were chat. I believe is the word. <laughs> what? Paisan. Paisan is the word. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. You yeah. guys keep uh, talking. I'm going to be I, right I don't back. Know. I'm going to be right back. Okay. All right. I, I don't think those guys knew each other, but they, 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 they came together and it was almost like they were a, a, like a comedy trio, like almost instantly. <laughs> Look at this uh, fucking guy. Those Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Wow, that's a good move. That's some. That's some. That's some. Uh, it's a good move. I, this yeah, is how that's you not do the kind of. You know, it's funny. I thought about doing that same bit. I was like, if I had some really big mobster glasses, and I don't. I was like, but if I had big, like, kind of mobster glasses, I would wear them. On, on this is more for. Yeah, it's just, I, there's less of a gangster bits, you know? thing and more of I'm just looking at myself in this camera, and I feel like I want to bash my my own head into the into the wall. So. Oh wow! Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. This is sort of me hiding. What do you think? You, you think you look puffy? You look puffy? I love you, Rob. You're handsome. You're talented. Yeah. <laughs> You're smart and forget about it. Eh? Hey, forget about your stupid boy face. Hey, forget about it over here. So this, for any of the creeps out there, and I'm, I'm wearing sunglasses now, and as I'm looking at it now, it truly is. The, the, this was a look adopted by gangsters in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s and when they got called in front of congressional <laughs> hearings they would they would get called there's this famous famous guy named joey gallo crazy joe gallo and he got called before congress to to testify in the senate and he wore these glasses like that almost look exactly like this now what what sells gangster more than going into fucking testifying in front of the senate and not taking your sunglasses off <laughs> And like, I think he had like a toothpick and he was like picking his, <laughs> picking his teeth and putting on a show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was the, that's the most amazing thing about those hearings yeah. is the like defiant sarcasm. Yeah. yeah you're on it. Like, you know, like uh, <laughs> never heard of a gangster. Laugh. <laughs> you know, and then yeah. the whole room like kind of chuckles a little bit. And then they're like, like, sir, please take these proceedings seriously. Like, you know, uh, what line of work are you in? <laughs> Construction. <laughs> sir, please say it with less sarcasm. <laughs> A little less sarcasm, sir. <laughs> oh, like what? Yeah. They, uh, uh, I mean, just open, open uh, defiance. Was... And then, yeah, because uh, why not? What's, what's the worst case scenario? Oh, wait, jail forever. Or, you know, you're getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, why are you wearing the sunglasses? It's so bright with the glare <laughs> off your pearly white skin. <laughs> <You're> fucking... <laughs> Why is it that there's like a charm to it? Well, because they're, they're living outside of social norms, like a... so it's the... it's kind of ex it's kind of exciting to get it. Yeah, from yeah. being on the outside and looking in. Yeah, we love we rules. love 
we love uh, rebellious behavior. We love rebels and we love any sort of yeah. form of Bunny rebellion. Kind of thing, like, uh, it's baked into our culture here in, in America, you know, to, to, uh, to like rebels and like, you know. <clears throat> yeah. Everybody wants to whack somebody off and get away with it. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's, yeah. yeah. We're going right yeah. for that cheap joke in that episode. Just <laughs> Boy, right that's, in. That's, I that's a joke that, that joke. we, I don't think would make any more like uh you know just talking about whacking us off so <laughs> stupid so stupid but funny but funny you know is this good lighting is this a good <laughs> <It is. laughs> that's fresh morning sun uh, i'm gonna fresh my coffee maybe i'll grab some sunglasses too because I, I actually need them i think Do you- Fuck. I'm just, I'm just loopy. Man. This podcast, just podcast is, this is off the rails. This one, we're gonna, should, we're gonna have to get we... this. We're gonna have to whack this podcast. Um, since everybody's getting up, I'm gonna check to see who's knocking on my door. Okay. I'm gonna leave this part in the podcast oh, where none wow. of you are here. Just <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, he's a foggy as hell. He's a foggy as fuck. Now, do you think that the do you think that the sunglasses thing was a uh, was a, def- a defiance thing, or was it like a recognition that? Uh... Okay, everybody's gone. I'm talking. To <laughs> I'm here. I, I'm here. I, 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 I want the opposite. I'll put on my sunglasses too. What do you mean? <laughs> we can't, I can't, I can't even fucking anything. see you now. Yeah, he turned off all the lights. <laughs> what is happening? Now it's night. <laughs> What I took my doing? sunglasses off, but I turned all the lights off and I closed the shades. But the thing is, is like the original thing where we could see your face, your regular face was the best look. Yeah. And then you put on sunglasses and a hat and it, it actually made, <laughs> it, I would argue you looked worse. It just looked weird. And now you just, uh, now you look like you're in a fucking uh, movie, found uh, footage Blair movie. Witch Project? Yeah, you yeah. look like you're in the fucking Blair Witch Project. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah I'm getting awful. Blair Witch vibe for sure. <laughs> Turn the lights yeah. on. Forget about it. Rob has like the most confidence of anybody, but then when he doesn't, he goes hard in the opposite direction. Like then he has yeah. none mm. at all. It's mm. very strange. Right. Mm. He, well, he oscillates between extremes, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's true. Do you, Glenn, do you think if I, my grandpa had kept his last name Del Giorno, I could have gotten cast in gangster movies? Oh, yeah. Or I just look too like Irish, and they would have been like, "Nah, his name is Del Journal, but he doesn't have that. He doesn't have a stereotype. It doesn't look enough the part." I mean, you don't. Yeah, you don't. You don't yeah. look. You, you don't look Italian for what? Yeah, for, it's the you know, everyone else who got in there. But we. How how much? How much are you Italian? Like what? How many? Like Same half? as Robert De Niro, a quarter. Wait, De Niro's a quarter Italian. He's a quarter. Yeah, I have the same exact. Like if you look up. Oh, he has the, the English and Italian and Irish and it's the same like spread. <laughs> Is he? Oh, but he looks Italian as hell. <laughs> I, the, I, I, I never knew that. You know who's my you know. favorite Italian actor? Talking about that. gangster movies. <laughs> Roberto uh. Benigni. <laughs> I could watch Roberto Benigni do anything. I only seen salad. He only did the one movie, okay. didn't he? I mean, I saw. I, he's, I, he's, I, he did about five hundred Italian movies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like you he, can find him. Yeah, he did a couple. Like, um, <laughs> he did. Um, oh Christ! Yeah, maybe we, we do have to move these podcasts later. Jim Jarmusch. Did, oh, uh, Jim Jarmusch movie Down by Law is really funny. In that remember when we started yeah. the episode oh, complaining yeah. about shit? <laughs> Can't hear him at all. It's all dead. He's gone, right? Is this crazy? This is crazy. Can we, we, we should just stop. Hey, everybody. It's time to subsidize Megan's rent again. Apparently, she's broke overseas. Not going to make it back to the States. Mm-mm. I put together a very sufficient UK travel fund, but I didn't convert it to pounds. Sorry, Mike. Your dollars are only as valuable as the Queen decrees. 
Right. So who's going to float you the cash this time? How, how are you going to get it? Well, this time it's our friends at Liquid IV who are fueling mm-hmm. life's adventures with their delicious and super efficient electrolyte delivery powder. Guys, did you know there's a lot of research coming out that staying hydrated is actually good for your health? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> staying hydrated is good? Tell me more. Well, there are two times that I find Liquid IV particularly helpful. The first is before or after a workout. I got three times the amount of electrolytes as traditional sports drinks, so it gives me that lift. And I think it tastes way better too. The other Mm -hmm. is, honestly, the other time is when I'm hungover. It really does work. Right. I, if after I'm your single just, Manhattan, yeah. after your gigantic Manhattan, you're going to want to use that liquid IV too, right? Uh, so go grab liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code SUNNY at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you use the promo code SUNNY at liquidiv.com. Experience better hydration today at liquidiv.com. Promo code Sunny. All right. Uh, those three guys, like, uh, first of all, the guy who played Lefty, who in the second episode, not the first mm-hmm. episode, was like, he's got very beautiful hands. What was his name? Ni- uh, ah, shoot. I don't remember his name? his name, but he is so, he had this delivery that was felt so, he just felt, he feels like a very, <laughs> he feels like a very real person like it doesn't seem it weirdly doesn't feel like he's acting to me it seems like a yeah it was so relaxed yeah, and natural so relaxed and so natural and i remember us kind of leaning in to being like what is he what is he doing and giving him more and more as we went you know like i don't think he had as much no. scripted and then being like hey you know can can we actually give that to this guy and, and have him say the thing like and maybe use you know if you know we may or may not, you know, his rhythm, off, his rhythm know. in that little speech that he gives about <laughs> Friday, uh, Friday is yeah. just so funny, you know, ending it with, like with a little beat and then, and that's Friday. <laughs> just, and that's Friday. And that's Friday. It might've been those guys decision to eat, be eating the sandwiches. Like his, like his decision to come walking up. No, I think that sandwiches. was a, a, a Roselle. I think that was a Roselle thing. I think it was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. These guys should just always eating be eating deli like sandwiches. lunch meats deli sandwiches and lunch meats like just a total stare like just the most stereotypical <laughs> possible thing <laughs> constantly be eating fucking deli meats i very much enjoyed the uh the tango and cash bit at the uh at the beginning um yeah. let's move it's just uh yeah. it, it, just a great uh it's just it just just made me laugh although i will say from a technical standpoint rob um if I had it to do all over again, and this is very technical, I would have let you get out a little bit more of Kurt Russell's name before cutting you off. You know, what? I just think it would have been a, just a just a hair funnier, like two mm-hmm. percent funnier, if I just heard uh, a little bit. For those who and for those who don't know, who yeah. starred in Tango and Cash, you got to get the spe- get just the specifics are yeah. important. But I I, I like how we um, we just got away mm-hmm. from we would every episode we would sort of reset and then show in the cold open what the problem was so we would we would suggest that hey we need money right isn't isn't that kind of what we're going for it's like okay so we're yes. saying we need money to yeah. fix something yeah, uh, yeah. and, well, we and then all of a sudden yeah. this opportunity for money comes into the bar um which we just got rid of i guess pretty quickly after that where we realized the audience just it doesn't it doesn't care that we need money in this particular episode well in some ways it it who doesn't want money, right? So it it, it would have been fine to have yeah. us just talking about whatever the hell we wanted to talk about, and then have them come in and be like, yeah. "Look what we found!" Like, why not? But I think we needed a couple seasons to get there narratively, right? Where so the audience knows, okay, Frank really sports these guys, and and like his whole thing in this is like, "I'm done bailing you out, right? Fix your own damn lights." Right, right. We were um, setting that up. So like. Yeah, and then by the time we got to the fourth season, we really didn't need to lay any of that. You know, we the rules were established. Frank has the money. We have no money. We're bad with well, money. It's also, it's also interesting to watch to, to to watch Frank be sort of the 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 straight man, the moral compass in the episode, the one who's like, you know what I mean? Like it's it's just it's it's so funny to think how far that character is coming. He does eventually, uh, you know, 
become my <laughs> pimp. So, I mean, he, he, he gets there very quickly. <laughs> he gets there very quickly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it, it was that all that stuff is so good. How about the, how about the, how about the jockey? How about that? Actor? That was great. Oh man. I think I, if I recall oh, correctly, that, that was a standard as a practices note where he couldn't, Buster couldn't do a line off your dick and, and he couldn't do a line off your cock, but he could do a line off your boner. <laughs> yeah, and let Buster do a line off your boner, which was ten times funnier. Well, it's, it's always funnier when they put us in a box and we got to come up with some other thing. I had no recollection mm-hmm. of picking up the horse poop. What a stupid and fun That's joke! It's like you know, you have a problem around po- horse poop, just like pick it up. Normally, we'd use a shovel for that, but uh, do each his own. <laughs> a jockey um, culture, I, a jockey culture in which they're all just partying and blowing <laughs> rails and fucking yeah. each other is fascinating i i i it's it's a great joke because it's not something that you associate with jockeys at all it's like something we just completely invented like <laughs> that, that they're just part of yeah um me confusing them with a lawn jockey is fun lawn jockeys are so messed well up. also the idea that the idea that like you know what a lawn jockey is but you didn't know that jockeys were real you just thought they were like lawn ornaments you didn't know jockeys were even a thing you know what i mean like um a miniature man on a horse the way that frank convinces you to become a pimp (laughs) let's talk about that actor that the actor who plays the the gigolo who who recruits me that guy was so funny man yeah he's so funny i think he had done i think he had done mostly soap operas at that at that up to that point like something makes me think yeah he was like a, a a soap actor um, and I don't know, it was just another guy that we, I think just auditioned and, um, but this is the concept that he pays this guy, <laughs> he, well, he's going to give him 20 bucks and then he just and stiffs, he stiffs him, him, gives him yeah. 10. And then he stiffs, he stiffs him. him. And then he stiffs him. Yeah. And then I love, I love that yeah. we stayed on that. We made the choice to stay on him and let him go fully back to like putting the hairnet on and starting to wash the dishes, you know, gives the guy like a little nod that he's working. It's just. Who else? So uh, do, do, do you remember who that security guard is, Glenn? The guy that kicks us out, Big Will. Oh yeah, Big yes. Will. The guy, that, the guy that Big kicks Will. us out is this Big is uh, is this guy named Big Will, and he I met him at Gold's Gym in Venice Beach. He was a trainer there, but he's a bodybuilder. Yep. And man, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. th- if anybody has seen Pumping Iron or is into um, bodybuilding at all. They know of of Venice Golds. It's a famous gym that Arnold Schwarzenegger used to work out. And there's still, yeah. I don't know, at any given moment, there's 15 to 20 bodybuilders in there working out. And Will was um, amongst amongst the biggest. Yes, yeah, professional professional bodybuilders who you know do what uh, Schwarzenegger did, like you know Mr. Universes and shit like that. Like it's the uh, what, what do they call it? The mecca of bodybuilding. Yeah, and so I remember the wardrobe department had tried to. So we wanted to have him in a specific thing because there was other security guards or whatever. So it was like a uniform and the wardrobe department couldn't find clothes that fit him. So they had to, they had to make his clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's not leave out the fact that Big Will was also your trainer for a a period of time at Gold's too. It's not just a guy that you knew. Oh, you trained with Big Will? Oh, he trained with Big Will. That's what he did. He was a, he was a trainer at Gold's. I wasn't necessarily going for his physique, but he was, yeah. He, tra- he trained all in all. Nice. He trained in all all sorts of different <laughs> body types, I suppose. I mean, the number of the, the the number of years it takes to pack on that much uh, mass, you know, that's not just the kind of mass that where you're ballooned up, you know, and then the second you stop, like two months later, you're back down. You know what I mean? Like the kind of mass where you're just layering on yeah. like dry meat. It's called bulk, bulk uh, d- dirty bulk. A dirty bulk is when you put on weight by any means necessary. So you're not, you're not, (laughs) you're not concerning yourself. You're. (laughs) Listen to me, listen to me. You put, I'm telling you, you put on weight by any means necessary. You do whatever it takes. Okay. I don't care if you got to go to McDonald's from sunrise to sunset. You go. That that's exactly what it means. Any means necessary. Well, because it well, you gotta you gotta kill a kid, chop him up, cook him up, eat him. Do it. Do it. You got to get the weight done. Any means necessary. That is truly exactly what it means. Where you because 
<laughs> you're in a restaurant you get up from your table you see another table people still haven't eaten you gobble down that food quick you get their leftovers you get it in and you get the Whatever. fuck out of there you got it I could do a whole episode on any means necessary I'm <laughs> Frank and Charlie feeling as though they have to eat by any means necessary <laughs> <laughs> that's an episode uh, hey put it up on the, that's put a, up on the board thing. that's how a thing goes Meg can you get that on a card Meg can you hear yeah, us let's I'll, get that I'll, on a card put that on yeah, a card let's remember down. and our next sponsor is our friends over at Helix Sleep for when you're ready to get off those toes and lay down for a good night's rest Oh, you gotta love them. You gotta love them. Now, that's been my experience with Helix. They make the top of the line mattress that it's leaving me feeling more rested and refreshed. You know what I mean? They have a two minute sleep quiz on their website that will match you with the exact right mattress for your needs, whether you're a side or a back or a stomach sleeper or even a plus side sleeper. Yep. And then they ship it right to your door for no additional charge. You have 100 days to try it out risk-free. They'll even pick it up if you don't love it. But guess what? You're going to love it, Creep. I took the quiz. It's short but shockingly accurate. It's kind of a mattress matchmaker. I was paired with the perfect fit in under two minutes and have been sleeping happily ever since. Basically, Helix is the best and you, yes, you should own one. And lucky for you, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sunny. Well, to catch the audience up, um, I have an older computer that I like to write on. I just like the... Honestly, the feel of the keys, they, I think they can take the brunt of my two finger hammering, uh, which is basically <laughs> how I, I, it's amazing the amount of sunny uh, episodes that have been written like, you know, like an old typewriter or something. Uh, I mean, Mary Elizabeth makes fun of me. She's like, are you, are you trying to break the computer? Uh, but I think I didn't break the computer until I uploaded the most recent version of uh, Google Chrome and the computer was like, nope. Not doing it, guy. And the whole thing sort of fell apart. But here we are uh, trying to salvage what's left. Glenn obviously can't be here because uh, it's not his day off from mm -hmm. the movie he's doing. So he's working. Uh, but Rob said he could be here. And now Rob is two minutes late. Okay. So I'm, <laughs> I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying he the. Said, uh, I remember when he said, "I guarantee okay, I will all never right. be late." And here I he will is, never folks. Be late. <laughs> I'm not late. Just you two are minutes. Two the same amount of late, late I was. <laughs> Rob <laughs> is wearing his best "Forget About It" shirt. That's pretty good. Did you do that intentionally? You know what? I had a shirt. I have this shirt in my closet. I've had it in there for about a year and I keep, you know, you have those, that clothing and you think like one day I'm going to wear that. And then uh -huh. I was doing a little cleaning, spring cleaning. I'm going to get rid of a bunch of stuff in my closet. And I looked uh -huh. at that shirt and I said, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to wear that one day. And Caitlin said, you haven't worn it in a year. It's yeah, time it's to get go. it out of the yeah, closet. Time to go. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to wear the shirt today. What do you think? Is that okay? um, Besides like the it. shirt, did you, did you bring your mic um, to this recording <laughs> or? Uh, yeah. Well, while he sets up his mic, I'll describe the shirt to the audience. So it's sort of, it's like a <clears throat> bubblegum purple. Um, <laughs> uh -huh, that's a great description It has like, like a white, uh, white outline. So like an outline around the collar, piping. Or outline, yeah. piping really. Yeah. It's sort of a funny idea, which is like, uh, like telling people like where the things are in case you don't see the collar. We'll let you know the colors right here, uh, and it has a bit of a of a of a goomba kind of a Italian flair to it, which I personally like. I feel like you could keep it's a pack of good. cigarettes in that front pocket, and uh, but but could a mobster ever wear that color though? Is oh the question. yeah, yeah, that's the yeah, thing about them. So? Yeah, there's a lot of well, mobsters can wear whatever yeah, they want. Joyful that's colors. True. There was a there was a stewardess on the flight who was talking so closely into that little. 
Sorry, there was a flight attendant on the on the um, genderless uh, aircraft that we were uh, crossing the sky in. No, and, airplanes uh, are very clearly men. They're just giant dicks floating. Yeah, on the, the sky. flying penis with wings. <laughs> and uh, the the flight attendant um, was talking so closely into the thing and with such a heavy accent that it was completely you couldn't make a single word of it. So it, it really sounded like. I think if you're going to start, that's going to work for me out. And if you ask me you know, all the connections, and it's going to work for me. And the draft of meals, and the left of the draft, it's going to go to the end, and then the right of the sun and family in Tampa, Florida. And you're like, okay. That's amazing. I feel like that, that's a great imitation of everything you hear at an airport. Everywhere you go, that's yeah, all you that's hear. Yeah, that's true. You're sitting that's waiting at the, in the jetway or waiting for the flight. Just, well, the next time, where was it out? The next time, on American Airlines. I don't know. Flight of the right <laughs> Yeah, because they've said it a thousand times and they're over it. I think I dare tell you about my time going to see uh, Siegfried and Roy with Mary Elizabeth and we were in Vegas and it was like they're, they said they're like, this is our, you know, 60,000th show. And they were so over it that you could tell they were saying the things just automatically. So they kind of said everything with a sigh, like, the power of magic, the power of life, the power of magic is on all of us. Touch sabers. And then they would like touch the sabers and they would kind of dance across the stage. Like the power of the power of a tiger is the power that is in you and me. Cat on, touch saber. Wait, they would say that out loud? <laughs> yeah, they say it out loud. Touch sabers. Yeah, as if to be like, touch my fucking saber, Roy, or I swear to God, if you don't touch my saber... Wow. Of course, the cat. Uh, the cats eventually had enough of that shit. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The big yeah. cats had enough. They had enough. Um, Rob, <sighs> cleaning out your closet was it a? Um, did you get as much satisfaction out of that as as oh, yeah. as I do? I like when I throw stuff away. It is the greatest feeling ever. I'm like, yeah. oh, why did I have this thing for so long? Yeah, it's one of those quality of life things that you know. Every time you, I, I, I look in my closet and it's just a mess, and I'm, I'm thinking like, one day I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean this out. I'm gonna get rid of half this stuff, and then I, I don't. And then over this past weekend, I decided I was just gonna commit to it, and I did it, and I feel great. Not as good as Meg would feel if she organized her closet, because I think she, <sighs> she enjoys that very much. Yes. One time I did all my bathroom drawers and I like put in little dividers in them. So like everything within the drawer was like divided, like every bobby pin was like in its special place. And then I took a photo of it when I was done because it was so, so satisfying. There's, I believe you I, sent that photo to me. Yeah. I probably yeah. did I think, send it to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> very. I recently did that as well. I mean, I was throwing out like a half a bottle of like some kind of like a uh, antibiotic I took and then stopped taking like in 2016 or something. I'm like, why do I still have this? And then, <laughs> I get busy, you case. know, I get, yeah. I get busy. Yeah. Uh, somebody celebrated a birthday this week. Big news, big news. Megan, Megan do you Gans. like birthdays or do they embarrass you? Uh, I, I generally like birthdays um, because usually I feel pretty accomplished by the time I like hit my birthday. Like it always helps if I'm like starting a new job right around my birthday. And for whatever reason, for a lot of years working in TV, I would start a writer's room in June. So I was like, oh, it's like this, this thing of like, oh, you're, you're not the same as you were last year. You know, there's something new happening in your life. But this year was a little tough. I turned 38 and I was like, I don't know why I was, I guess it's because I finished a job or like I'm coming to the end of Mythic Quest. And then I was like traveling and I've just been like eating and drinking all the time and like not exercising or doing anything. So it was kind of rough. But <clears throat> on my birthday, I um, decided to jump rope for 38 minutes. And so I did that. Um, and that made me feel good, but my, uh, calves are still so sore that it, like when I go yeah, upstairs, I would settle for 38 <laughs> jumps. Yeah. Let's like, stop, 38 let, jumps let, can, can we stop? Let's stop down on that for a second. That's psychotic. What, what she just <laughs> described is psychotic. She doesn't jump rope on the regular. She just decided out of the blue on my 38th birthday, I'm going to jump rope for 38 minutes anybody yeah, who's actually, ever jumped you know rope That's knows that after one minute you're exhausted it's extraordinary yeah yeah i i once did it uh had like i was doing a workout thing where it was like okay and then the guy like sent me like hey do some jump roping and, and one and i think that it was like 10 minutes and 10 minutes of straight jump roping was awful yeah it's brutal. <laughs> i think i was like nah i'm done i'm never again 
Um, I it was really, really brutal. Yeah, I have an ability to like shut my brain off from my body in that if my body is like this hurts, I'm like, I don't have to listen to you and uh, and just like keep going. So I just did that for 38 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 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 the mega I know. I mean, that's that's psychotic. She has the ability to just bear down on something. She has an, a goal and she will she will accomplish that goal regardless of the physics, regardless of the reality of her health, regardless of whatever might stand in her way. So it does not surprise me that she did 38 minutes at all. Well, I, I tried it's to an get amazing on feat. Sunny it's an amazing for, feat. I tried to get on Sunny for eight years um, and I and I did that. So, you know. When, before you came on Sunny, uh, where did the gang get whacked uh, episodes rank in your enjoyment of the show? It was pretty it was pretty high up there. I mean, my all time favorite is the gang gives Frank an intervention. Um, so I'm really excited for when one. we get to that episode because I've probably watched that episode like 50 times. I love that episode. <laughs> we haven't um, discussed Danny's friend Cha Cha yet, right? Because we haven't gotten oh, to um, no, the road. We but he he makes an appearance in this season. Yes, and uh, Cha Cha was yeah, in the. He makes an appearance in the road trip episode, right? Yeah, isn't that season? Is that the next season or is that this oh, that season? Yeah, he's the, the guy season. that we buy the pear from that has the sticker yes. on that. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I love um, that and uh cha cha was like danny's old buddy who he met him because he was tony danza's fight promoter is that correct i think that was what it was yes. like uh yeah he was so in, in the, the fight taxi game. days yeah and cha cha definitely was a connected guy yeah i i think ways. we can talk i think we can talk about this now because cha cha is no longer with us and i think it's okay but i and he's he was never he was never open about it but it was i think it was pretty clear that cha cha Chacha was connected. Chacha knew some people. I, you know, the best I, guy. Actually, he was the best. He was the best. He was the best. He was a nice guy. Yeah. And who knows too? Like uh, the, the thing, the whole mafia thing. Like, I pretty much only know what I know from movies and TV. You know, and uh, maybe like one book that I read. But like, how much of it is? How much of it is an like actual organization, and how much of it is a is like communities of people so that there's overlap, right? Where it's like, um, you know, like a community in let's say Staten Island or Jersey, where yes, like you know, there's a group of very clearly people who have are in these organized crime families, and then there's like some people that it's like maybe like Cha Cha, where it's like he knows everyone, he grew up with them, he might get a favor here and there, but he's not on the payroll. That would be the difference between a, a, a made man and a connected guy. So the made oh, men are like the actual members yeah. of the family, and there there used to be. Well, I guess I guess they still exist. But the 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 the, the five there's five major crime families in New York, and then and then there's like all the ancillary people that are around it and connected to it, like maybe drug dealers on the streets or things like that. But but the made members of the family. I think there were, depending on which family you were in, there was only like a couple hundred of them worldwide. Oh, wow. Rob probably knows yeah. more about this because he reads more mafia books than me, but <clears throat> I once read a book about the history of the Cosa Nostra. Cosa Nostra, I said that right, right? And, yeah, um, Cosa Nostra. And how it started in Sicily. And there was a lot of overlap between it just being like a neighborhood thing because basically what happened was Sicily just kept getting invaded by a bunch of different countries. And so they were changing governments like all of the time. So the people that lived there year round needed somebody that was like consistent that they could turn to. So there were usually these people within the town that were like, you know, their dons, for instance, that like oversaw the things that they needed in their community. And so it really grew out of like a need of consistency and having, you know, that neighborhood like connection. And so it's always been from that. And like, I don't know what the translation of that to New York was, but that's really where it came from. And then eventually it was like, you know, there was lots of lemon groves in Sicily, which made a lot of money. And there were people walking around being like, God, it'd be a shame if these lemon groves all burnt to the ground. Maybe you should pay us to protect them. (laughs) And uh, there's a lot of that. (laughs) I would hate to see it. (laughs) But but according to Cha Cha, whenever the the mafia ever came up, he would he would always smirk and say what mafia there's no mafia so he never talked about it really but then he would tell these crazy (laughs) stories crazy stories that were so 
funny, really. Um, I never heard any of like the violence or anything like that. It was more just like crazy. He he used to th- he he was in charge of putting on the fireworks show for the San Gennaro Festival on Mulberry Street every year. Now now fireworks are illegal in New York City. Private citizens can't just set off fire fireworks. So not only did he have to transport them across state lines, but then he actually set them off. And one time he blew himself up. He blew he blew himself <laughs> up on Mulberry Street. <laughs> he said he was thrown from the street uh, almost onto somebody's porch and into their living room. I had to go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah, he blew him up. He, he was blew blown to up. safety. Blown to safety. Blown yeah. onto someone's couch. Yeah. Oh, catch ya. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you know, Danny, though, I remember being specifically not wanting to do anything that was, for him, too stereotypical sort of mobster Italian, just wanting to say like, Hey, I, I, I don't mind, you know, doing an episode where we talk about th- these characters that do exist, um, and these sort of types, but also he didn't want to go down that route. So like when we were writing it, you know, made sure that like, it wasn't like, and then Frank had some connections and a connected guy. Like we avoid that pretty much completely in that storyline. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we didn't want to draw, draw the, the, the stereotype of like all Italians being gangsters or something. I think that he was very conscious of that, which I think was more of a, more of an issue back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, like around that Godfather time when it was such a huge part of the popular culture. And, and I know that there was like the, the Italian American league that was, that was created in New York city to sort of combat that there was a lot of um, prejudice against Italians. Of course, that was started by a gangster um, who was trying to throw people off the scent, Joe Colombo, who was the head of the Colombo crime family. You know what? Let's not talk yeah. about any of this. Let's just cut yeah. all of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we're cut covered, though. all this before we wind up in a, in a fucking taking a we're cement covered, bath. We're covered, I'm actually Italian too, Charlie. Did you know that? My, oh. On my dad's side, his mother go. was born in Italy um, and her name was Anne DeLawless and her father's name was Caesar DeLawless and her... Um, and his wife's name was Conchetta de Apollonio. And nice. they came over literally through Ellis Island. So we're good. We're, we're, we're totally good. good. We're good. We to can lawless, talk though. Wow. Okay. It was in their name to be lawless. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, but but there was, there was prejudice against Italians uh, because we were also like around World War II. We were in a war with Italy, you know? Mm-hmm, so, yeah. um it, it, that's why my grandfather, or, uh, no, I guess it was my grandfather that officially changed his name from Del Giorno today because it was like, eh, let's just try to get rid of this Italian thing. Uh, but he couldn't change his nose and his face. But he did eventually through his <laughs> through children. He just watered that down and uh, homogenized into hair. the yeah. Mm-hmm. Where's Glenn? Should we discuss that? He's not here. I mentioned it briefly before you popped on, but. Um, <laughs> You know, we are, we had technical difficulties. What are you going to do about yeah. it? You know, the main thing is that the show goes on, you know, that, that someone can drive to work and be entertained. This is what, this is what we're, this is the point of it. So if the entertainment is that, uh, none of us can get our damn computers to work, then that's, what's funny. You know, I don't know. Are you feeling better but about no, your face Glenn is today, in actor Rob? mode today. I feel better today. Yeah, I feel, I've, well, it's, it's, it's not, it's not five. I, I was jet lagged and it was 540 in the morning. Yeah, people don't want to hear me complain, but, um, but I feel better today. Yeah. It's better not to do it at five in the morning for sure. Yeah. That's, that was, that, it, that unless was we were all like in the same space at five in the morning, but until we can all be together again. Yes. Yeah. That would be fun. But again, I think we've covered this too. I like the idea of somebody who's on their way to work right now. Uh, he's, he's driving there to work. It's, it's about 5 AM and he's hearing us complain about sitting in front of a computer and, and talking because uh, it's too early. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. left all that in too. Oh, that's oh. There. Yeah. was that, was that from all that episode? Yeah. From this episode. Yeah. It's at the beginning. We're just complaining it because Glenn did that funny run about champagne problems and you complaining about your pod being next to somebody else's pod on the plane. <laughs> like, it's funny. <laughs> By the way, I, I, I don't like champagne. So champagne alone is a problem for me. You know, and Agreed. I, I don't, I don't Agreed. care for it. I don't care for the taste. I don't care for the, taste. I don't care for the I aftertaste. It. Oh yeah. The first couple of times I had it, I was like, wow, this is refreshing and sparkly and light and amazing. And then I was like, it's like a cup of pure sugar. You guys are wrong. 
It's delicious. You like the champagne? I, I love it. I think Meg was drinking champagne in the last episode. I she was. was. I cut that out though. <laughs> no, fuck that. Wait a second. You With cut Meg out it, that you you're, you're We've given too tendencies. much power. <laughs> we have abdicated too much power to Megan. She cuts out her drinking champagnes, but keeps in our champagne problems. All right. You know what? I'll cut it in right now. I'll just cut in a, a series of every time I drink champagne. <laughs> okay, great. Just a quick couple of cuts. I feel like there's one episode where you had had some cocktails and people called you on it because they said you kept winking. I did, yeah. <laughs> you did? You actually were? Oh, that's funny. No, I well, that's I said at the beginning. Uh, yeah, I said at the beginning of the newlywed game that I I had a couple um, that I had a couple champagnes and people in the comments were like, I could tell because she was winking and I totally. <laughs> 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 that's that's you can't. Great. I love that it's it's involuntary. You can't stop. I can't. You can't well, stop from winking. This maybe transitions to the question I had for you guys from this episode, which is, um, so in the episode, Charlie's talking about nose clams. He's trying to use that as a, uh, as a, as a winky, um, way to mm -hmm. say, uh, cocaine. <clears throat> so I wanted to ask you guys, have you ever like used code, had to use code to get something like coded language or had it used with you that you either knew at the time or then like found out later? I mean, had to is a, like, I, I think like maybe in high school, you know, you might've someone, there might've been like, uh, when you really used to have to like hide weed or whatever it was, you know, maybe would have used code for that, but no, I don't think. I had a. You mean aside a wedding... from my work at the CIA? You mean aside from my whole <laughs> yeah. aside covert from operation I've been doing? <laughs> um, we yeah. had a we had a word in grade school that was sort of a catch all, and it started because um, we stole a pack of uh, of one of my friend's parents' Newports, and we were smoking menthol cigarettes. This is fifth grade, sixth grade, just to be disgusting. I don't know what we were doing. And we were, we would like smoke the cigarettes, but, and then we were like, thought we were so cool. And then, but we, we knew, we knew we couldn't call them cigarettes or Newports when we were talking about them. So we called them Cinemax. And the reason we called them Cinemax was because Cinemax was a cable channel. Does that even exist anymore? Cinemax? I think yeah, I think so. so. Yeah. It was so. a, yeah. It's a, it, 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 yeah, maybe it is, but it, it was a cable channel where, um, I, I, I didn't, we didn't have cable, but I, I would go to his house and like late at night, Cinemax would turn into Skinemax and it would be the time where you could see like naked people on, on, on TV. It would show all the softcore porn stuff. So then C Cinemax became this catch all term for anything that was, whether it, any kind of like paraphernalia, drug related, not, not, I wasn't into drugs, but like even pot, um, drinking alcohol, uh, cigarettes, nude, nude magazines, everything became Cinemax. It does still exist. Cinemax, by the way. It does. But yeah, yeah. That's totally what I remember it being. Apparently it was like launched in the early eighties. So that's what it was known for then. Yeah. Soft, like soft core porn. Yeah. I just had a memory. I don't know what made me think of this, but my, my buddy, Aaron, lived in my neighborhood and his neighbor had to like like disappear in the middle of the night i remember this was a story that was like there was a couple that had been living there and they were really shady and then they like took off and the cops were there and and no one seen them right and uh so of course as kids do we're like great let's go sneak into their house and see what's going on there <laughs> So, so we, we, we snuck into the house and we were poking around and it was weird as shit. There was like a bunch of wigs, like a bunch of like wigs. <laughs> and we found like a couple like different like IDs for like the same person and knives and like a pack of parliament cigarettes. So we're like, well, let's try one of these. Awful. Didn't care for it. You know, we're maybe too young to get hooked on that, but like, just be like, take a puff. And then that eerie feeling of like, we should get out of here. <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah, probably the feelings that you up. might like, you, how many times you might've like crossed with someone who's like a real life gangster and just, of course you don't know, right? Like you mm -hmm. have no idea. Like, well, Whitey Bulger or whatever his name is, Bulger? Bulger, Bul Whitey Bulger. Yeah. Whitey Bulger, yeah, Bulger. Was he, lived in, he lived in Santa, Santa Monica. Monica. He, yeah. yeah, just hanging you out. Know that, that area we, we run, Meg, sometimes down San Vicente. Yeah. He lived in one of those apartments there. Absolutely. I know it's it's crazy. I wonder how many times you've crossed path cross paths with someone who's murdered someone else, or like a serial killer or something. 
serial killer, killer think, I bet that's rare because I think they're yeah, rare. They're not too common. I always think, but, you know how uh, people say, like, if I got to talk to God, I would ask him, like, what's the, or her, sorry. Uh, um, where, God, uh, <laughs> I, <almost laughs> don't do that. Um, where, like, why do bad things happen to good people or what's the meaning of life and everything? And I would always ask questions like that, which is like, what's the crazy, like, have I ever been right next to a serial killer? Or what's the closest I've ever been to being murdered and then didn't get murdered? Like, things like that. Well, That's I thought totally... about having you murdered a couple times, you know? <laughs> like, uh, I thought it'd be funny. Uh, then I thought it'd be sad, it'd be like really sad for your friends. <laughs> Uh, then he started getting famous, and I thought, well, it'd be a good story, right? It'd be a good story. Uh, and then one day, you know, you were kind of like, you made a joke about me, and I was like, fuck, you all have him murdered. Uh, uh -huh. But mostly, I just <laughs> forgot about it. You know, I had a whole list of things I was dealing with, and I uh, forgot to have you chopped up. So, uh, I mean... <laughs> Christ, I mean, there's so many things you could ask God. Be like, why are people, why? How's this part of your plan? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Bitch. Yeah, child leukemia? What's that about? Why? Leukemia to little kids? You fucking bitch. <laughs> if it's a woman, if it's a man, it's still a bitch. Yeah. Um, oh, God. I have the fear of the lightning bolt now. You know what I mean? That's the upbringing. Like, oh, I made a joke. I'm going to get blasted. <laughs> oh, so that's, God that's is Zeus. You. In your mind, God is Zeus. He throws lightning bolts then. <laughs> oh, most definitely. Where, do you, where else yeah, do you think yeah, lightning yeah. bolts come from? <laughs> uh yeah i don't know i cross paths with some crazies I, weird kid shit what else uh <laughs> we lost we lost ray liotta speaking oh yeah of people who play gangsters oh, yeah. and, and uh, you you charlie you've you've worked with with ray i had the pleasure of working with ray on my movie yet to be released and uh he was jazzed on it, man. He was, I'd shown him it and he was really excited, I think, to be in a comedy. And, you know, he had said, I don't know if you'd ever seen the show, but he had said he would love to have been on Sunny. So he was like, and why don't you have me on your TV show sometime? I was like, absolutely. I'm thinking of something for him. So, oh, God. You could have asked him, him instead go. of Sean Penn. Maybe he would have done that. At the time, no. Yes. No. At the, not time, at the time, at the time he, we probably he, could not he, have he, cast him either. But, um, well, we would have tried and he would have turned it down. <laughs> that is the funny thing, too. I do sort of feel like people are like, yeah, I'd love to do your show. And then you can't. Remember we had that with Sam Jackson where I feel like yeah. you and I bumped into him or something. And yeah. he really he said he really liked the show. Yeah. And then so we tried to reach out to him for something. And it's like we couldn't even get past the walls. And I'm like, God, don't tell me the guy won't do it. The guy answers the phone like, I'm in. Who's calling? <laughs> right? that's, like, that's basically you know what is it what are we selling credit cards I am in I am in what's on the plate what's on the plate oh hell yeah I'm in fucking snakes on a plate I'm, I'm in who is this <laughs> I literally saw, I, I was with Jason uh, Bateman and his phone rang and I swear to God as a bit, but also it, I, he actually answered it this way. The phone was ringing. I said, are you going to answer that? He took it out of his pocket. He goes, yes, I'll do it. I'll do it. What is it? Yes, I'll do it. I'll do it. Hi, it's Jason. <laughs> Sam Jackson, man. I feel like really, you know, there are certain stars that sort of open the doors for people to say you can do a bunch of you can do a bunch of things and still survive it and yeah. he's one of them man where he was like no i'm uh, fuck you i'm I, yeah i'm gonna do the credit card commercial and and i'm gonna keep working with quentin or whoever you know like what a talent what a talent sam jackson opening the doors charlie you're one of those guys you're one of those yeah. guys you're showing yeah. showing people you can do everything that's right i saw you, you and i saw you now. in a green suit yeah, buddy. In the NBA playoffs. Yeah. Pretty sweet. Paying for the reshoots of that film. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Courtesy of Mountain Dew, huh? Love it. It's a funny Why spot. Not? What are your favorite mobster movies, guys? You want to talk about that? I mean, I mean, good, good fellas, fellas is hard to hard to I, good fellas I, I is think a I've seen, Yeah, I think I've seen Goodfellas more than in any other movie maybe. Uh, Cuz that that's a movie that's if it's on and you're flipping through the channels, I'll just stop yeah. and watch it no matter what. 
And Casino is pretty great as well, but Casino is just amazing. And the Godfather. And I watch the Godfather. Yeah, I watch the Godfather's one at two. least once a year. Yeah, one and two. I'll watch them at least once a year. And uh, my cousin Vinny. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> my cousin Vinny's Very great. Mob. Analyze this. I mean, come on. There's so many. <laughs> there's so, there's so many. many good ones. But I'm I rewatching The fellas. Sopranos right now, which is also fantastic. Mm-hmm. 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 I know. Good mobster stuff. Uh, I have a, there's a nostalgia I have watching these episodes for the t- where we were as people filming them. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. the just seeing the mobsters outside in the street um, at the end of this first part episode and that really wide shot. Was that Fred or was that Shackman? This was Matt Shackman, but I'll look it up. I think it's Shackman. I, I think it might have been Shackman too. Um, and just, you know, just the filming in Philly, how fun it was. Mm-hmm. But also that like, this was everything. We really didn't have anything else going on. And I do really miss the sort of uh, streamlined nature of that, which is that our attention was fully, look, this last season of Sunny, we weren't thinking about other things. Once we're in, we're in, you know? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, not only were we, were we in, but we had everything riding on it. And I do miss that. Like, that, there's something so... And you can only do that once. You can only do that early in your career. Because if it works and then you're successful, you'll never have that thing again of, like, just, like, the combination of the excitement of getting the opportunity, the excitement of having something to really prove... And then just the newness of it all, the newness of like, wow, we, we, you know, we're, we're locking down locations and where was it Shackman who did it? It was, yeah, it was Shackman. Yeah. And like this guy's pitching a shot from like across the street and we really haven't done something like that yet. And this is really interesting. And I love that uh, high angle I, shot he has when you do the eyes, boom. And then you guys are shot mm-hmm. from like above the whole time, uh-huh. you and D, while you're like looking up into the camera. You know what's funny? That's I watched fun. that again thinking that was a mistake. Thinking that that would have played better. Oh, I thought that with, was so funny. With, without our faces facing the camera. But that. No, because of but, that moment, not to argue with you about your own show, but because of that moment between you and D where you're arguing with each other about like you saying nose clams, it's more yeah. like you're in your own world because we're on your faces and we can't see him as opposed to like from his perspective, which would have. I agree with, with that in terms of like why it's shot that way, but I actually feel like it moves the intent. This is a weird sort of just thing in my head, but it moves the intent to specifically to the point of view and that that argument might play better from from uh, his Bingo's. point of view Bingo's where point. he has these two people staring up at the sky arguing with one another as opposed to the audience's point of view where you get to see what they're what they're looking you know what? at. Let's but, reshoot it. Let's reshoot uh, it. I, I, I don't know if we reshoot it, but I think I think I remember this conversation happening on set. I think mm. I remember you having saying this to 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 Shackman. You know what's interesting that how often That's that very happens. Possible. Yeah, yeah. How often that happens where where um even in the podcast sometimes I'll listen back to the podcast and I'll I'll start you'll say something and I'll start laughing and then I hear myself in the podcast laughing because of course I still find the same thing funny. But in I'll do the same thing with the with the episodes where I'll feel a certain way about how something was shot. And then I'll remember back to a time where I, we were there on set and maybe feeling the same exact way. It, 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 it carries over a decade later. You still feel the mm-hmm. same way, even though That's you're funny. wrong. I'm probably, probably wrong, but it's something that probably in the editing room, if ed, probably the way we decided on that is we probably looked at it the other way in the editing room if we had the coverage and we said, yeah, it's actually better to jump up there because they're up, they're looking up there for so long. Mm -hmm. But it's almost like, I feel like I don't like when the camera tips the joke in a way, which is like stay in the same coverage, but just where they're looking has changed. But yeah, maybe it just would have been too much of their chins and it wouldn't have been funny. Like in Dumpster Baby, when it's like from the baby's perspective, you guys were talking about that, like from the baby's POV, it was like too Mm. jokey. Mm -hmm. But I had a question actually about that moment because like there's a whole exchange between um, Charlie and Dee where 
where you're you're talking about nose clams and she's like, it's confusing. And you're like, it's not confusing. It's like, and there's a reference to like, we discussed this. Was that one of those instances where you had a scene before that bingo scene where you guys talked about how you were going to talk to bingo and then you cut oh. it? Almost a hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, most yes. likely. It sounds like the kind of scenes we write all the time. And then just mm -hmm. get to the editing room and you're like, well, something has to go. And you're like, the, they'll, the audience will know what's happening. We don't have to have a scene saying we're going to, we're going to have this argument. And then I wonder if it would be fun if we could go back, we could ask our post-production team to go back into the archives and find some of those scenes. Cause most likely they were edited and then we cut them last minute to take some of those scenes that we felt were unnecessary to the story and again, generally deleted scenes are boring to watch because there's a reason they didn't make it into the show. But I wonder if after all of this time has passed, it might be kind of a cool way to look back at the show and what didn't make it in and why and kind of talk about that. We could have a whole podcast episode about that too. It could be the the cut that cut. Yeah, cut that, cut that, cut that cut. Well, it's like every episode's different. You know, I, f I feel like I remember some of these earlier ones like the molested episode or something, we cut down like under time, but then under time was the best version, you know? Mm -hmm. And then some, we were like, oh, there's no way to to get out, you know, it just depending. It's, it's amazing how often you're watching something and it feels long, but you look at the runtime and it's only 20 minutes and then you can watch something else that's 40 minutes long and it feels like you're ripping through it because you're so engaged all the way through. Yeah, in fact, on this one specifically, did we clear that it was going to be a two-part episode with the with the network while in the writing process or was it something that in the editing room we had to break up into two episodes because we're like there's too much content here i don't remember to tell you the truth i don't remember either i know that that's happened a few times where we broke a story that was too long but we love the Mac story and charlie die was yep. was that where we were like yep. oh this is too long and then we went and we shot more scenes yeah we shot more scenes. That's exactly what happened. We shot really? more scenes. We had a new editor come in, Tim Roche, who's been with us from, from that point forward. And then yeah. we realized, oh, all we need to do is supplement the second half of this story and we can have we can have this be two two episodes instead of one. And I believe that's when we brought the glo the glory hall hole into it. <laughs> and the and Jan and the and the roommate. I know the whole orgy storyline was part of what was added into that for sure. But I yeah, think the glory yeah. hole thing was in from the beginning. That was from the beginning. Yeah. I, well, I, I, I definitely remember, a, I definitely remember an index card being up on the wall for a full year that just said glory hole. We, we, we were going <laughs> to find a way to put that into an episode. That was the scene and we're getting ahead of ourselves, but I, I feel like that's the episode where we found Frank. You know what I mean? Where we really felt like, like Frank sort of, <laughs> Frank's sort of casual attitude about the buffet at the orgy. Uh -huh. We were like, okay, this is the guy. You know what I mean? He's a little bit more like business, business, angry business guy in these first few seasons. And then yeah. just sort of like. It's uh, interfering with my nosh. Isn't that what he yeah, says? Yeah, like, sort of like <laughs> casual, like deli, deli meat guy is who he became. <laughs> <laughs> also that whole thing with him and the Charlie like mannequin thing that he's kind of yeah. carrying around because he misses you so much. That's sweet. Yeah, but the whole pimping Dennis out in, in this one is is great. Well, but but we have, we have a whole other half to talk about. Yeah, to get yeah. to. Mm -hmm. the, and I, as and, I remember it, the second episode is funnier than the first, save for the stuff with the jockey with with Buster because that scene that is one of the best jokes that we've done the, uh, uh, the entire season, I think is doing a line off Buster's <laughs> off of Buster's boner. That I kind of forgot it when we were, when, <laughs> when I was rewatching it, I'd sort of forgotten that that's where it went. And, uh, I was very pleased. <laughs> and then you yeah. just like, look at him and then you just leave, <laughs> you know? That's yeah. Something. Yeah. You know, there's no, um, what are you going to think? You're, yeah, you're, you're either going to do it or you're going to leave. <laughs> yeah. 